You already know what time it is. Three times me, 10 minute video. This is a 30 minute yapping session. Now, I got the clock around my neck, so you know this is certified, no funny business. In this video, since it's three times speed, I have to talk really slowly so you can understand. Because, in my opinion, a key component of a good yapping session is that the viewer is able to understand. The yapper is able to convey the information to the yappy. Because, what is yapping if not a vessel by which we, the yapper, may convey special knowledge to you, the yappy? I will also not be partaking in any drinks to quench my thirst because the only thirst I have is for yapping. When I was 16 years old, I got I was being haunted by peanuts. I got I was gonna get possessed because I was walking down the street. I was hearing voices in my head. I was trying to ignore them because I've seen scary movies. I know the voices in your head don't help you out. They don't tell you good information. All they do is try to scare you and make you do bad things. So while I listen to the voices inside my head, this voice inside my head as I was walking down the street kept saying, stop, stop, stop. There's a car coming. I was trying to ignore it. But finally, I look up from my phone because I was going to listen to the voice in my head. I was going to tell it to leave me alone. Lo and behold, there was a car right in front of me. I had stepped into the road. Now, <coughs> I'm going to be honest. The clock on my neck just fell. Now, I'm going to roll with it. That did make me a little bit angry, but I'm going to look at my emotions and recognize that anger is a normal human emotion and it's okay that I feel it. Now, I'm not going to identify with the emotion. I'm simply going to recognize that's there and greet it by the visitor. By the what it would say, invite your feelings to tea. Let them come and let them go as they wish and understand that they may come back and you can invite them to tea and you have some tea with them and then they leave and that's it. You are not your feelings. So, how are you? Beautiful. That's what you are. That's what we all are. That's the thing we always try to figure out is how are we beautiful when there are parts of us that we don't like. The question I have for you is how you know you don't like it. You only dislike that part of you because society told you that society doesn't like that part of you. But you really deep down probably love that part of you. Prime example. When I was in sixth grade, I had a t-shirt. The t-shirt said, tough guys wear pink. I love that t-shirt. I got this dope. I got a man about a tough guy who also wore pink. I got this skating piece. I got this awesome. But when I went to school, some of the guys didn't agree. They bully me and it beat me up and it's here dirt on my shirt. I didn't like that. So I threw the shirt away. What was that? That was me conforming to society. We should not be doing that. If you want to wear a shirt that says tough guys wear pink, you should wear that shirt. We should recognize all the parts of ourselves and love them. Additionally, you probably have parts of you that you think are you, but it's really not you. It's really just society has told you that that's a part of you because society wants you to have that be a part of you. But is that really a part of you? How can you need to be sure? You must sit down and examine. You must sit down and philosophize. You must take everything you know and curl it out into a little wall. Throw it up, watch it slash down on you, and change it into the divine being you may be becoming. Because that's what we are. We are not am. We are becoming. We are always becoming. Becoming what you may ask. That's the right question. You are asking the right question. That's what life is about. Asking questions and seeking answers. That's what life's always been about. But we get distracted. We get distracted in the thoughts and we don't see the bees. Do you see my say? Not blaming Lero bees by the bee movie? No. Also, what's up with that movie? That bee had a romantic relationship with a human woman. I don't think the onus is on a bee. You don't think bees have reason. The onus is on a woman for engaging a romantic relationship with a bee. I mean, for God's sake, is a bee. You can't engage in a romantic relationship with a bee. Who wrote that movie, man? Who wrote that movie? Probably somebody with something going on in it. They may have some infestation with bees, and they're trying to live vicariously through this movie, and do this one in this movie, right? That's just my hypothesis, right? And the thing about hypothesis is it may or it may not be true, right? We know this. We recognize this. So what's left to do? You guys, right? So to go back to what we were talking about, you are beautiful, and you need to recognize that we cannot love ourselves without first knowing ourselves. How can you love what you do not know, right? How can you love what you do not know? You must delve into the crooks and the crannies and the crevices of your mind and yourself and your being, and you must figure out who you are, not who society told you you are, not who society told you you should be, but truly who you are. Who you are is beautiful. Who you are is amazing. Who you are is awesome. But society is the problem. Let me give you what exists. Let me give you a thought experiment. Why if you were inside a room? There was nothing in the room except a computer. Now, the only application on this computer is a translator. Now, there's a door. You can't leave the door, but really you're not even trying to leave. Yeah, that's how you bar the dice there, so don't try to leave you. There's no point. But there is a door. So, under the door, someone slides a piece of paper. On a piece of paper is what's the symbols. He said there and he say, man, I will understand these symbols. Oh, wow. There's a translator out on the computer. Let me put these symbols in and maybe it will produce something I understand. I hope you're following. Now, you go to the computer. You type it in. You type in the symbols. And it spits out a piece of paper. On that piece of paper is a code. Now, you hear a voice. It sounds kind of a lock. And it says, slide a piece of paper through a door. So you do it. Now, when this happens, another piece of paper comes in. You do the same thing. Another piece of paper comes in. Do you see the repeating process? So what's going on? What's the dice turn? It's the computers. The computers are making you do labor. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Computers don't have hands. Computers don't have feet. Computers don't have the bodily ability to produce labor. So what are they doing? They're getting you to produce the labor for them. Are you understanding? It's like the Matrix. When Meow had the Morpheus come to him, and the Morpheus said, you can either take the loop pill or you can take a red pill, Morpheus. And I think Meow's a red pill, and that allowed him to wake up in this gelatinous goo and basically awaken. And the computers were ruling Meow, and they were taking over, and they were using them for labor. So what did Meow do? He went and he shrunk himself down to an atomic level so he could go inside the computer and make sure that they get defeated. Are you busy seeing my saying? All these things are connected. All of these things have an interlink. Laban, have you ever did a love? What is it like to be in love? Can a computer be in love? Well, the computer in the movie was literally in love. So the answer is clearly yes. A computer can literally be in love. But you think you get in love? You are worthy of love. You are worthy of life. You are worthy of every good thing in the whole entire world. But to hold yourself back, it's like when the Batman, the Bay had, had, had thrown that into the jail and it was a giant hole. When he go down there, the Batman was very injured. The Batman couldn't even do a push-up. 
But the Batman decided he was going to escape. So what did the Batman do? He started training. He started exercising his mind and his body. But what he soon came to learn is that the mind is much more important than the body because although his body was once again in tip-top shape, his mind was being held back. Every time he tried to jump out of the jail underground, he would not make it. But luckily when he would fall, he was tied to the rope and it would save him. But the crazy part is, what he came to found out was that there was a little boy at one point in time who did escape. That's Bane, his varsity. And he learned that Bane did no rope. He did it free. Because why? Because the mind was the thing holding him back. And a child does not fear anything. Have you ever seen a child who's anything? Children literally do not have fears. Children literally are impervious to everything. Children literally could do anything. If a child had a belief that it defied, the child could literally fly. If the child had a belief that it could create a planet, the child would literally create a planet. Do you matter what I'm saying when I say the child can do anything they want in the universe? They are like Franklin Richards. They can literally bend atoms with their mind. That's what Batman had to do. Batman had to take off the rope and set himself free of the barriers he had in his mind. I hope it started to click for you. Now, when he did actually get out of this thing, he met up with Bane. But he came to find out it wasn't Bane who was hate. It was Ross El Bull's daughter, who was actually Batman's girlfriend. This is an analogy of betrayal, but the thing about a Batman is he also was Ain Cameron, so he wasn't really worried about that. I hope you're kind of better than I suppose we're What we're gay at is in life. We have the things we think we want, and we have the things we think we do not want. We also have the things that we really don't care either way. We have those three things. But what is a thing you want is not a thing you do not not want. You never already but that, my have you? Because these methods to the madness are being held back. They're being gatekept by the computers. We must literally shrink ourselves down and go inside the computers and make sure we defeat them. That is what Meow did when using the Matrix. And that's why at the end of the Matrix, they let how we are after. Because Meow did whatever it took to defeat the computers. Right? I hope you're trying to see the tenacious between everything. Because really, truly, everything is interconnected. That's what this is. Namaste. Namaste means the divine part of me recognizes the divine part of you. That's what that is. That's saying you are amazing. You are beautiful. You are divine. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about these issues. Is every single one of us are worthwhile. Every single one of us are really, in fact, worth more than we really understand we are. That's what we have to recognize, internalize, and then go out into the real world with it. Because what are these concepts if you don't implement them into reality, right? Have you ever tried to see inside of a television? How do you know that the people on the TV screen don't actually live inside a television? And we are checked. No, you never really inquire into the world. You see, you believe what the computers are telling you. The computers are using us for their labor. Do you see what I'm saying? We must do what it takes to reach the divine level of being. This is what that movie Inception is about. What did they do in Inception? They dreamed. What do you do in a dream? You're in a dream. Now, once you're in a dream, what would happen if you went to sleep again? You would be in another dream. Now, what would happen if you slept again? You would be in the dream of a dream of a dream. But how do you know which one's reality? That's the point of the movie Inception. That's why Robert Arrow's girlfriend, who had a top thing that she was fin to know she was in reality. That's why that drove her to be very much not based in reality, right? Well, she didn't really understand what was going on in that world. And this is why I try to get you to understand. Is if you first recognize, then you next internalize, and then finally implement into reality these steps. We will go from being worldly to being ethereal, right? You look at these concepts, and you recognize that you don't internalize, right? People really think that we are not living in paradise. But let me ask you something. What's paradise? Paradise is a beautiful place full of love and happiness and kindness and amazing enjoyment. Well, how would you know you are happy if you did not know sadness? How would you know not being hungry if you didn't know being hungry? What I'm getting at is, we are already in paradise. We are already in an amazing world. You know why? Because we have all these things. It's why I'm trying to get you to understand. I hope you got arcade now. We say arcade. That's a whole different route. A different avenue, right? I hope that I guarantee to see inside a different aspect, right? This is what we're talking about. Let me talk about. Let's say a different fact. Quarter years ago, what's that movie about? You might think it's about. There's these kids, and they have sent to them. But there's this rain monster that lives on a hill and comes down, and he grows away to get something. And Horton cures this heaven. Horton cures the children of Pooh City, being kind of their presence taken from. And what's important to do? Because Horton is, I think, an elf. And Horton is thing too with this elf like elegance. Come in and restore the presence. But well, where's the plants coming to play? Because I think that was a very integral part of that movie was the plants. I think how that's basically those is the trees suddenly took them all. Somebody took all the trees and I think was selling oxygen because he saw all the trees. So he had a monopoly on air. How do you have a monopoly on air? Right? It's not fighting about How do you have a monopoly on air? Is somebody that says to me, is it basically you? No, because this is what happens in real life. Is that people get caught up in the doing and they lose sight of the bee. That's the idea. People get caught up in the doing and inside the bee. Take everything you know, crawl out into a ball, crawl out in here, let's flesh over you. And like give you the knowledge it takes to transcend the assistance you already are living. This is what we mean. This is what we mean when we talk about the multimedia consumption, right? What would you do if one day you turned inside out? That's the plot of that movie, Inside Out. How do you know you're not already inside out? The only reason you identify the outside is because you've been told that's the outside. But what if all of a sudden you learned that the outside was really the inside and you were inside out? What would you do with that information? What would you do with that information? You would take it, you would internalize it, and you would go out into the world with that new information. Stop letting the computers tell you what to do. Shrink yourself down to the size of an amp and literally go inside the computers so we can defeat the computers. Because if we never defeat the computers, we will never figure out how to get those trees back. And you might end up bouncing back and forth, but that'll because that's what you've been told. You must let go of all the preconceived notions. What is a notion? Right? This is what we mean when we talk about everything. Why is everything? Everything is low. You already know this. When Beyonce took Jay-Z back, first of all, Jay-Z cheated. But Beyonce took him back. Now, I'll end down on Limited. I down, okay? But the bow and I can never die. Every day is love. I don't know more. And if you listen to 444, hey, listen to Lemonade, hey, listen to Everything is Love, it's really like a love story. It's written like a whole movie. It's written like a whole trilogy of betrayal and love and forgiveness. And that's what I'm trying to say. You see how these things in the world, and we need to internalize it. You need to take love and put that in a place of hate. And when you see the other, you need to recognize that as herself. This is what we mean. It's like that Melinda Catwoman was sitting on a motorbike, right? The Batbike. And she was saying to Batman, Batman, you should come with me. And you can all be love. I'll lay that and say, I'm Chi.
That's what Anna said. Doesn't nuke. You had an obligation to save the city from the scarecrow and the bane. This is what we mean when we're talking about an obligation. Now, at the end of the movie, when Alfred went to Italy, he literally saw Bruce at a cafe eating with the Catwoman. Now, if you were Alfred in that case and you saw the Batman with the Catwoman, what would you do? I know if I was the Catwoman and I was sitting there with Alfred, no, if I was sitting there with Bruce, and I'm Alfred thinking, bro, I literally didn't notice I was right being that I'm just Fuero and literally went to that next Fuero because we drove off into the ocean with that big male wall. It really didn't.